Convection is the transfer of heat in fluids, gases, and liquids due to differences in density caused by uneven heating. Density is a measure of the amount of matter in a, an object per unit of volume. When heat energy is added to a fluid, the molecules begin to move faster, bounce off of one another, and spread farther apart. The result is a decrease in the number of molecules in the heated portion of the fluid. The heated fluid therefore becomes less dense or lighter and rises. As the heat fluid rises, the colder, denser fluid around it sinks and takes its place. This continuous cycle of heating and rising, cooling and sinking creates a convection current. Scientists believe that convection currents are at work inside the Earth. The magma is less dense than the solid rock surrounding it and so rises to the top of the mantle, spreads out just below the crust, cools, and then sinks back down into the lower mantle where it is heated once again. In Activity 4, students discover that heat makes gases and liquids rise. They relate their observations to convection currents in the mantle. They observe convection currents in air and water, infer that heat makes gases and liquids rise, and conclude that heat in Earth's core causes convection currents in the semi-liquid mantle. This activity will take two sessions. Session one will take about 30 minutes. Session two will take about 40 minutes. The vocabulary introduced in the, this activity is convection, convection current, and density. For this activity from the kit, you will need for each team of four, one ounce plastic cup, eight ounce foam cups, a dropper, and a plastic tub. For the class, you will need a candle and red food coloring. In addition to the kit materials, you will also need to supply white paper, candle holder, two liter plastic container, matches, tap water, a slide projector, overhead projector, Make copies of Activity Sheet 4 for each student. You will also need Activity Sheet 1. In this activity, students will learn more about what happens inside the Earth's mantle. Return the worksheets from Activity 1 and ask students to review which part of the egg model represented the mantle. They should respond that the egg white re represented the mantle. Question what else they know about the mantle. They should now observe a demonstration that models what scientists believe is happening inside the mantle. Use the projector and a candle to demonstrate convection currents in the air. Project the light so that it shines past the unlit candle and onto the screen. Have students record their observations. Light the candle and instruct the students to observe the screen carefully. So let's take a look at what our candle looks like now lit, Johanna. Um, what do you see happening? Okay, I observe that there are uh, squiggly lines of uh, air moving. Um, uh, it seems like those little lines that are moving upward away from the candle seem to be going faster, close to the candle, and then they just kind of go up to a certain level. Do you think you're seeing any smoke? Causing some of those waves. You know, lines? I would expect to see smoke, but I really don't see any smoke. I don't see carbon or darker air. It all looks really pretty clean. Well, this might be a good time to have a student come up, a volunteer, just one, and give them an idea of where to place their hand above the candle so that they're not going to be burned, but they can feel that heat coming off of the candle mm -hmm. and uh, describe to the rest of the class what they feel. Uh, what do you suppose is causing the air above the candle to rise? Well, it's obvious that the heat must have something to do it because it seems to be rising faster, closer to the heat. So um, I think that the air must be being heated. So at this point, we're going to introduce the terms density and convection to the students by explaining that density is the amount of matter or molecules in a given volume of material. When air is heated, its molecules begin to move faster bounce off of each other and spread farther apart. When this happens, the heated air becomes less dense, or, in other words, fewer molecules in a given space than the cooler air around it. The heated air then rises. Define convection as the transfer of heat in the air or a liquid because of density caused by uneven heating. 
Tell the students that the circular path of gas or liquid as it is heated and rises spreads out and then cools and then sinks in what is called a convection current. Students will still be observing the candle and the heat that's moving over the candle. And so what, what do we notice that is still happening with the candle? Well, the candle is still burning and the, the lines of heat waves are, ra are still radiating out above the candle. So we want to make the point at, with the students, where is this air coming from? I think students would probably know that uh, air, that they're surrounded by air. Uh, but it's the heat source that makes a difference in the way the air is rising. So why doesn't the air run out? That's, we want them to understand that that supply of air is continuous. Okay, right. Well, it has to come from somewhere, so it's probably falling. Uh, you may not see the, the uh, air flowing down, but it has to have a source to keep replacing that. At the end of this session, we want to extinguish the candle and turn off the projector and collect the student's activity sheet one. They will be used again in session two. Return the candle to the kit. In session two, tell students that in the last session they observed how convection currents behaved in air. Now they will observe how convection currents behave in a liquid. Give each student a copy of activity sheet four and divide the class into teams of four and distribute four foam cups, one plastic cup containing some food coloring, one dropper, and one sheet of white paper to each team. Have one student from each team get a tub of water from the distribution center. Okay, let's set this up, Johanna, okay. like we want to do it. If you'll take the four styrofoam cups, we're gonna place those so that they actually become legs to our tub of water. Okay. So that we might even want those a little bit closer. All right. Like that, so that our tub is gonna sit on there. Um, and also, then we're gonna place a white sheet of paper on top of the cups. Kind of center it like that? Yes, ma'am, so that we can actually make sure that that way the kids can see what's going on in the chamber. Now, Pick that up very carefully and let's set that on top and we'll see that the styrofoam cups support our tub of water. Now I'm going to give you the drops and if you'll just fill the dropper up, we're going to put three drops of, uh, of the food coloring down in the very bottom okay. of our tub. Okay. Well, Johanna, after we've um, put our drops in, what do you see happening down in our tub of water? Okay, I see that there is some interaction with the food coloring and the water, but there isn't a whole lot. Okay, we have a place that we need to record on our worksheet. What's observations that we see going on at the beginning? What's some, what are some things that you think we need to write down about what we see happening mm -hmm. in our tub? Well, I think that the student, this would be a great opportunity for students to work on writing specific observations. Uh, they can write about the uh, food coloring itself, the water around the food coloring, and try to be as specific with their observations as possible. Talking through some of this is really good for them to do before they actually start writing. We also want to caution the students to be sure not to shake the table while they're writing oh, their observations right. because we don't want a lot of that shifting of the food mm -hmm. coloring. Well, now that it's been about five minutes, let's take a look at our tub again. Mm -hmm. Uh, what can you say is happening now? Well, I can see that there's still a pretty good concentration of the uh, red food coloring down in the bottom. It has moved out some and mixed in on its own around. I could see if we were to draw a circle, the circumference of the circle really is a little bit larger, but it certainly doesn't spread out all the way uh, around the bottom. But you can also see that there is some, some of the uh, water has little currents that are moving upward, but not, not a whole lot. At the end of five minutes, students should record what they see. Now we're going to set up for the second trial. We're going to do this, Johanna, just like we did the last one, except this time we're going to add a fifth cup that's going to have uh, hot tap water. Okay. Um, and we're going to set that right down in the middle. So a good way okay. to do that is to have a thermos in your mm -hmm. room if you're having a, a hard time with a hot water source. All right. So, um, Bring a thermos in of hot water and then okay, you we're going to fill it pretty it. full, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to slide it down. Set it right down in the middle here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, great. We're going to okay. put our white sheet white over, sheet this, over just again. Like we did before. The students also have these directions on their worksheet, but okay. they're also going by instructions. And so then we're going to set our tub right on top like we did before. We're going to be careful not to jostle it around. And we're going to add our three drops, just like we did just the last time. Just like we did time, the last time. Down this, on the bottom. Down on the bottom. All right. Okay. Okay, now that we've put the three drops in over the warm water, mm -hmm. Johanna, Let's look and see what's happening. What do you see happening? I think that's pretty awesome. I can see currents of red food coloring just kind of going right up, uh, flowing up toward the top, almost like that can candle did uh, in the other one. Uh, but it's they're just currents are going up, and as they go up, it appears that as they rise to the top, they're spreading out though. Uh, so kind of look like they're floating over to the side. Yeah, they? they do almost like a, a semicircle, completely or a full circle around the uh, source of the red food coloring. Yeah, I do. I see. I see it beginning to drop down on the sides too. Well, maybe mm -hmm. we need to record what we're seeing here at the beginning. Okay. So let's put some observations down. All right. Okay. All right. Now that it's been about five minutes, let's take a look at our. Um, let's look at it again. What do you see happening? Oh, now? that's pr really pretty incredible. You see where the uh, concentration of the red food, food coloring is not nearly as much, but it has flowing all around uh, from that source up to the top, and it appears like it's coming right back down again, uh, around settling around the bottom. So it may be almost recycling itself. Yeah, it, it did look like it came dropped back down and came back over and got heated up a little bit, and we even s kind of saw that cycle again, didn't mm -hmm. we, taking off again. Okay, so we're going to record our observations then again after five minutes. So now that we've got our observations down and we've done it um, with with the warm and just the room temperature water, let's look at how those trial one and trial two compares. What, what's the difference in what we did on trial one and trial two? Well, trial two had a heat source. Uh, I think at the very beginning they were very similar, but it didn't take long that the interaction of the uh, food coloring in over that warm heat source that it, it really did change quite drastically. So I think that if we compare the beginning to the beginning, uh, but the end to the end is going to be pretty different. And then we want to make a point with the students again. What happened with the, with the one that we had the heat source on? Uh, what happened to the water when it reached the bottom? About, it seemed like it was almost going back up into a cycle. Uh, back up, it, it was kind of diluted, so you couldn't tell. But the kids will probably be pretty cued into that, and will look real carefully. I think they'll see those convection currents pretty clearly. Pass out the students' original activity one worksheet and have them review the Earth's inner structure. Ask them to tell which layer is directly below the mantle and to describe the temperature of the outer core. Tell students that the outer core is even hotter, in fact, much hotter than the mantle. Ask the students, since the mantle is melted rock and it sits on top of a heat source, the outer core, what do you think might be happening to the magma in the mantle? Show the students a diagram like figure 4-2 in your teacher's guide without the labels. Have the students identify the layers and add the labels as they are named. Question the students about the arrows in the drawing and have them point out the areas where the magma is hotter and where it's cooler and add these labels to the drawing. To confirm the students' understanding, ask them to give the heat source as the outer core for this convection current. Orient the drawing so that it matches the work, their activity sheet one and have the students add the arrows to their activity sheet. Johanna, would you like to add the arrows to your activity sheet one as the sure. students might do? Sure. So it's, it's rising from the outer core mm -hmm. and going up. And as it uh, goes up away from the heat source, then it cools and comes back. Just like what we saw in our convection currents Absolutely, in, our, yeah. in our liquids. Mm -hmm. Have the students dump the water and leftover food coloring down the drain, rinse the tubs, plastic cups and droppers, and allow them to air dry. Return these materials along with the foam cups and food coloring to the kit. Guide the students through the reading pages six through eight in the Delta Science Reader.